Hey fancy friends, welcome back to another new video. So today I'm going to be telling you, oh by the way, hi if you're new, I am so sorry. If you're new, I feel kind of bad. Um, if you're like a returning subscriber, if you're one of my plenty friends, this is like normal to you. But um, hi, my name is David. We upload a lot of plain content over here. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing and joining us on this crazy plant journey. Today I'm going to be showing you how to propagate a, a philodendron mycans and you guys so the reason why i'm doing this right now as of now i am propagating a lot a lot of house plants right now and i'm getting like a hundred four inch pots and like some 60 like 3.5 inch pots i'm probably getting a lot of plants because right now i'm like i'm having like a propagation fever i guess you can say and i just want to propagate everything and i i'm like i should like take advantage of that and like make money out of it because like you know who doesn't want money to like buy my plants right yeah because these growers don't pay for themselves and also i'm going to be showing you on light requirements water requirements fertilizers propagating and all the other stuff that i can pull off the top of my head if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section because i'm going to be missing out on some of these things and the reason why i want to do this video right now is because i want to propagate her like asa because i just i don't know i want to propagate her so bad now low lights and like highlights and moderate light like it's like getting like more not useful now so i the way i can tell you this plant so right now I have it on east facing windows this plant doesn't get any grow lights and as you can see she's doing really really good even then um there was a time when she was getting grow lights and she was growing pretty 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 fast just like every other every house plants the more light you give it indirect um there are some house plants like fiddles and um spider plants as well a lot of other that i cannot just say on top of my head that do really really good with bright direct sunlight but that's only when they're hardened and in their natural habitat, usually. Um, I have experience that I've seen that before and it's beyond crazy and they do super, super good. But a lot, of, a lot of the house plants that we buy, they're from like our local nurseries or the big box stores and those plants have not been hardened off. They've been like, I guess you can say babied like in a nursery. So always place these in low lights or in direct light. Like it can, some of them can handle think of it as like babies you don't want to burn them and scorch them and if you want to give it some like direct light like a fiddle i have my photos right now developing they're getting direct light right now you have to transition it you want to harden them up i think it's called harding them off the process little my it's it will do pretty pretty good in low light like i said i have them on my east facing windows like behind the phone i have two i don't even know my sizes but there are two windows on east side and when the in the mornings and we get direct light over here but even then the windows do have a tent which dilutes the light and where it's this plant is at it's on my shelves and this is like like 10 feet of a distance so like i said it is pretty good in low light it will grow a lot more faster so one my requirements and my recommendation is if you have a spot that gets really really good indirect light Place is girly there, and I promise you she's going to be doing really, really good. But also, you'll want to consider that it's gonna to need to be watered more often compared to if you put it in low light, because when it's in like you know in more light and more heat, um, it dries out a little bit faster. And what else do I want to say about lights? Okay, so indirect and um, direct. If you guys don't know those terms, we we throw them a lot in the plant community. So uh, or plant people. <laughs> so direct basically means like the sun is like hitting directly at the leaves and indirect means the light's getting diluted i hope that reasons and you guys understand what direct and indirect is now let's talk about fertilizer which is one of my favorite things to be honest with you guys like i said i push my plants to their limits i love experimenting with my plants and just getting dirty and stuff like that <laughs> so i always whenever i water them i always fertilize them and usually because the plant room has this fan on i just turned it off because i'm filming but it's always on 24 7. i have my grill lights on for like 10 plus hours sometimes uh i give them like a break but and it's really humid as of right now well it's not that humid right now it's 65 percent humidity in the plant room <clears throat> that's because i had the door open because i was like you know walking in walking out but it's 75 fahrenheit when i walk in um when there's no doors being opened it gets like 70 percent humidity all the way to 80 percent humidity which is kind of bad but i have the fans on on high and sometimes i open i also open the windows but i'm kind of scared now because i feel like i'm gonna get pissed i was talking about fertilizer Yo, but i guess a lot of like the basic and it's the safer way to fertilize your plants. Um, I use microgrow. I know it's not the best fertilizer out there, but it's easier to find and it's a lot more affordable and you get a lot more bang for your buck. I'm not trying to like branch out for any fertilizers, but microgrow for me is just my plants love it, my bank loves it, and I know like it's not a really great corporation, <laughs> but like I already bought it. I'm trying to like you know get rid of it, like finish it, and then I'll like you know get a new one. You want to water your I'm gonna just say like the basic stuff, like literally 
it's this is like always a lot of tags you want to water your fertilizer in my cans with uh some fertilizer you want to dilute the fertilizer in half and then you want to fertilize it every single two weeks in the growing season which is usually spring summer and usually fall but a lot of these plants when they're indoors they don't they still grow like literally throughout the year that's why i'm like a little bit like why well, i don't know why they say growing season because my plants started to grow from like all the way to like spring all the way to winter like they grow year around and sometimes they do slow, slow down the process because they're not getting a lot of lights but i replace them with grow lights that's a whole different video about grow lights but yeah so you want to fertilize it with your favorite fertilizer and you want to dilute it you only want to fertilize it every single two weeks in the growing season but the way i fertilize it to be honest is like i said every single time i water them and i usually water my plants like once a week twice a week in the growing season which is in spring and summer because like it's getting a lot more light in here and it gets a lot more humid and a lot more warmer which you know it speeds up the water evaporation and they it, it, the plants grow out a little bit faster so yeah that's on fertilizer now we can talk about watering so this girl does like to dry out a little bit i can say I know don't let it completely dry out because you don't want it to like what happens when you let it dry out for way too much the top leaves get yellow it gets like a bald spot like it becomes like leafless over here but a lot of beautiful foliage over here and there's a way to fix that which i will explain a little bit because i don't want to get off track about the watering so you want to water every single time the top three inches of soil i'll, I'll say three inches people usually say two inches but the top three inches you put your finger and if it was if, and if it feels dry then water it honestly you can do that, but the way I usually check when it needs water, I usually use my moisture meter, which I'll have it linked up below. It is one of my lifesavers out there. Like if you're getting into plants and you don't know when the plant needs water, a moisture meter is amazing. But to be honest, I don't really go based off a of schedule when I water my plants. I go based off whenever my plants tell me they need water. Now, whenever a schedule tells me, tells me that they need water, is when the plants tell me they need water. And usually with philodendrons, their leaves get a little bit softer. As of now, she just got water two days ago, so she's really, really nice and firm. But the leaves get softer and like wilty and the soil looks dry that's when you know you need to like give this girl a top watering or bottom watering i usually like to bottom water my plants because there's so many benefits but um yeah and honestly this plant needs to get repotted again I, when i bought this plant i got it in on my local nursery on a 3.5 inch pot and it was like really really small and then i got it like oh, when was it i think like a year ago and then i ended up repotting it to this pot which is like i save a lot of my pots because like i don't want it to, it's just a waste tossing them out um this is like a succulent pot that I got from like Lowe's and I ended up, you know, repotting my succulents and I kept this pot. But I ended up placing it in this pot, which is a 14 ounce. I don't even know, girl. But like, yeah, so it's a lot bigger. It was like three times the size of the 3.5 inch pot, like depth. It was like really, really small. Well, double the size. Anywho, so <laughs> yeah, and now she's getting a lot longer and she needs to get repotted. But I'm, what I'm just going to do, I'm going to place some soil on top and I'm going to cut her. And I'm explaining why propagating your plants is amazing. But yes, whenever the plant tells you that it needs water, it's great to water it. So whenever the leaves are wilting, that's when you know, you know it's time to water her. Now, propagating. So a lot of people usually when they propagate their plants, and not anymore, I'm seeing like a lot of people doing it by note because it's just so much better. So people back then, girl, um, and people even then still, like, this is just a preference, but I usually, well, I'm gonna tell you how they do it. So they get an entire stem, they cut it over here, and they place this entire stem in water. And there's nothing wrong with it, it will develop roots, and you get a whole new plant. Or you can do it by nodes. And to be honest, that's my favorite way to propagate my plants, because I get so many plants from a small, uh, from a stem. <laughs> so over here, so you guys can see, there's roots, there's a leaf, and you just cut this part, you place it in sphagnum moss. People are propagating their plants in perlite or in water or in soil. So many ways to propagate your plants. My favorite is sphagnum moss, and I usually use a taco cabana bowl, uh, my little tapa. And I love taco cabana and I love their bowls. Oh girl, there's a ladybug in the plant room. That is so good, is it? I heard so many benefits of ladybugs. Like, I'm kind of scared. But I know those are really, really good insects. <laughs> I just got a beneficial insect in the plant room. That's interesting. But yeah, so I use this a lot. I put sphagnum moss in it. And then I place the cuttings by nose. And then I make sure that the sphagnum moss is moist. I cover it and I place it in a bright and direct spot. And it, it mimics a greenhouse environment. Which is really, really great when you propagate your plants. Because it speeds up the process. Sorry, sorry if I'm talking really, really fast. It's just there's so much I want to talk. And also, I want to propagate this girly as soon as possible. And also, I just had coffee. So bear with me, y'all. But yeah, I like to propagate my plants by nodes that are noted. There's a lot of, like, if you search up, like, plant node on Google, you're going to see a lot of diagrams on, like, 
what makes it i'm like a, I, I can't explain it it's just the way that i explained it to you you're gonna see a leaf and some roots this is literally an entire node and then over here is a node and then there are there <laughs> right there there's a node so yeah i'm gonna give this girl like a cut and then i'm gonna propagate all of these or cut these by nodes and place them in the Fajo Cabana ball because it's a learning process these plants there's going to be a time when or if it ever happens you're, you're you're gonna get yellow leaves on top and it's gonna get bold the way to fix it is you propagate your plant so you give it a nice haircut so like you chop it and then it will promote new growth on top and it will make your plant look a lot more bushier which is literally amazing i love my plants to look really really bushy like i said this was only like two stems and after propagating it so many times it so whenever you cut a stem it usually puts out two new stems so you know if there's two stems you're gonna get four stems if there's four stems you're gonna get eight stems and so on and so forth so yeah, that's why I love propagating my plants because it makes them more bushier. I get new plants which I can sell to make more to make money and buy new plants, buy plant materials like pots, soil, fertilizer, and other other good jazzy stuff, or just plan, pay my light bill because like these grow lights are not free, y'all. <laughs> my light bill is a little bit expensive. No, but so <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. These are LED. Um, they do put a little you know a kick on my light bill but not as much as like the other ones lord have mercy so yeah we really talked about light we really talked about um fertilizer propagating and watering what else do i want to get to pests i haven't dealt with any pests with this plant but I i'm not really a pro on the pest departments y'all <laughs> i'm gonna be really really honest with you i'm really like i know how to take care of it but when there's pests what i usually do i just rinse those pests off and i continue re like rinsing them off until so they're gone and usually it has been working i've dealt with spider mites aphids and um scale so and i know there's like a lot of other great like antithesides out there like what do you call it neem oil and alcohol rubbing alcohol would be great for the scale but for some reason i never buy it like i i don't know why i never get it i honestly probably should since i have so many plants and at this point i'm like getting really on top of my plants whenever i see like a pest i if it's like ready like like insane and it's a really basic plant like in other words i can find it in my big box so it's very easily i just toss that girl out so i think that's pretty much it you guys uh i know there's like a lot of other things like when to repot it so you repot your plants whenever you see roots at the bottom or whenever your plant is root bound usually for this girly she's a little bit empty on top and i would usually repot this girl since she is pretty big but i don't really want to since i don't really see a lot of roots in the bottom and i don't think it's root bound. people usually like to pull out their plants which is great and it's super like nice to look at like the roots but it stresses me out because it feels like i'm like removing their guts out and then like I, it just it freaks me out so <laughs> i feel kind of bad for the plant so i just go based off the roots and on top so i, I always give this girly a top dressing of some fresh potty mix soil and that should do pretty good i might repot her in the fall because i think that's when she's gonna get really really big but yeah, this is my philodendron on Mikeins and how I care for it. If you guys have any questions, please let me know because I'm pretty sure I miss out on some. Also, I just want to say this before I get in trouble. This is how I care for my philodendron Mikeins and how, what works for me. We all have different environments. We all have different lighting, humidity, temperature, and all the other stuff, which actually makes a big difference. A big, like, you know, big difference when you care for your plants. So yeah, and oh, I didn't, I didn't say about humidity, y'all this plant I, I had in a very you know very humid room so which is why you're seeing a lot of these crazy air roots happening and let me show you this another one so not this one but my brazil is putting out some like two inch air roots which is literally insane by nodes and i'm so proud of her a lot of these plants would enjoy humidity just as some of us enjoy a beautiful sunny day but it's not really necessary like it will still thrive and not thrive thrive but it will still live and grow for you so I guess I can say this girl would be perfectly fine in 40% humidity all the way to like 90% humidity um, if you have a lot of air circulation because that's really really important because I'm not going to get mold this I, I think because I'm trying to like think if it can handle like you know indoor environments like the humidity because indoors is usually like 30% humidity sometimes even 20% humidity all the way to like 50% humidity max without any plants or stuff like that but because in my old rental home I didn't have a humidifier and the plant room wasn't I then had a plant room, so my plants were in my bedroom, and the humidity in the bedroom was like 40% humidity, and I had this girlie right there, and she was thriving, so she I didn't saw any crispy edges, so yeah, I guess I can say this girlie doesn't really, it's not really that sensitive with humidity, so you can place this in your bedroom easy peasy, compared to like other like 
caletias or ferns, but have mercy. Those girls like need humidity, like nobody's business. Some caletias do perfectly fine, but there's some caletias that are just such divas. I'm looking at my white caletia fusion. She's so gorgeous and she, she knows she's a diva, like she's beautiful. Okay, I'm getting off topic now. <laughs> no, but yeah, so this is how I cut my pleasure micans. I think I hit all the, the points that I wanted to hit. And I, I'm like putting it on my face because it feels so soft. Like honestly, this plant is like really, really soft. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.